Micah, the seventh chapter, the eighth verse, he says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. He says, When I fall, okay, I shall rise. He says, When I fall, I shall rise. A child of God never sinks. He never, we never sink. It doesn't matter how many mistakes we've made. There is a place in us that is in God that can rebuild you again. That is why the warning is to our enemies. That is why the warning is to the devil and his cohorts. That's why the warning is to those that carry spirits of wickedness in high places. The warning is to those who speak evil about you and against you. The warning is to those who speak regardless of whether they are right or wrong. The Bible has said, let's just say you were the wrong one and you've truly fallen. He has said, rejoice not against me, my enemies, for when I fall, I shall rise again. There is a point where God intends to bring us up again. The Bible says, who are you to judge another man's servant? Who are you? He's asking. Do you think that your position of a bishop, apostle, pastor, prophet, evangelist, man of God is enough for you to judge a woman of God or a man of God? No. He says, who art thou that judgest another man's servant? And that Bible says, to his own master, the Bible says, he standeth and fails. Yeah, the Bible says, he shall be holding up. If you read that from the Amplified, it says, who are you, O who pass judgment and censor another man's household servant? He says, it is before his own master that he stands and falls. And listen, listen to God's mind. Listen to God's mind. The Bible says, he shall stand and be upheld for the master, the Lord is mighty to support him and make him stand. In other words, every orata every intention for every child of God that you are spiting at, you're backbiting, you're speaking evil about, you're blackmailing. Even in the most fallen nature, there is a mind with the master to make that person stand, and not only to make him stand, but to uphold him with his own power, support him with his own might, so that man will stand. The end of every believer, even in the most fallen state, is to stand one day and they always stand they always stand that's the way of God they always stand they always stand praise God hallelujah they always stand and he continues to say when I sit in darkness the Lord shall be a light to me you see because he never leaves that man he never leaves that believer yes she's in darkness but even in that darkness, if she is or he is a man of a covenant, God will come and give light there. And be his light or her light in that darkness. And the next verse says, And I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause. See, the man has sinned against God, but God is pleading that man's cause to execute judgment for the man, not against the man. For the man, not against the man. And the next line says, he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is my enemy shall see it and the shame shall cover her which said unto me, where is the Lord thy God? My eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire. Listen, God has... <laughs> See, you can speak evil or think evil of a fallen brother or sister. But have you ever asked yourself what God's plan for that individual is? And look at how he says that the eyes of your enemy shall see you go up. And there is nothing that, that person can do. The same people that judged you in your most straight times. They will see you go up and there is nothing in the world they can do. It has come to my sense, both spiritual and physical, that if somebody is in a covenant with God, you don't write them off. God has a way of rebuilding even the most broken things. The Bible says he's the saving strength of his anointing. And how God lifts up this person in a time when he has positioned you to see them rise, to see her rise, and then tell you, watch, this is the one you thought would not rise up. 
This is the one you thought would not make it. This is the one you thought would not have their own job and their own house and their own ministry. This is the one you assumed that there were no more. And God has dealt. God has dealt. Because that's the heart of God. You, you cannot make God be what is not. That's simply the heart of God. And look at what God does. God promises that I will take you from among the heathen. These are men that are fallen. He's prophesying on them even when they are not yet restored. The word of God is coming to them to stir their hearts to repentance, even when they still don't get it. You see, he has sent the prophet because he, he only works by the word. It's the law of beginnings. In the beginning, you know, the world was without form. It was void. The spirit of the Lord was hovering over the earth. And God said, let there be. The law of beginnings comes with the word. That critical word that is commanded in the spirit realm to change your circumstance, irrespective of your attention. That's the law of beginnings. Everything was formed by the word. The Bible says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Everything begins with the word. Some of you are going through things and you think, oh, you know, I don't know. No, no, no. All you need is a particular word. And for all of you watching me today, your word is this. I'm speaking from God. He's speaking something in somebody's life. I don't know whether it's your business that had stalled, it's your relationship that has stalled, it's your career, your education that has stalled, your body is at a stall. I don't know what is happening in your life. As of whether you are responsible in your ignorance or your deliberate mind, as of whether it's not even your doing, wherever you are, I have good news for you. That all you need is the word to kickstart this redemption. So you see, at that time, the enemies of Israel are triumphant. They're victorious. The wealth is theirs. The provisions are theirs. The external prosperity is with them. The children of Israel at that particular point, externally, have none to show. They are beaten. They are bruised. They are thumped. They have nothing to them. But you see, by God, they're his beloved. And they are the advantaged ones because they still have a relationship with God. And so he says, look, I'll take you from among the heathen. Now there's a prophet speaking. God is speaking what he's going to do in spite of their foolishness. And he says, and gather you out of all the countries and I will bring you into your own land. And he says, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, I will cleanse you. This is God promising. And he says in the next verse, 26, A new heart will I also give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you, and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. I want you to underline that. Cause you. You went wherever you wanted. You went wayward and crazy. You were forward in your life. But this thing that I'm doing intends not only to put my spirit in you, but I want to give a power to you that will cause you to walk in my statutes. In other words, I intend not only to get you out of that mire, I also intend to put something in you, to give an instruction in you, to release a certain power and grace in you that will cause you to walk the right way so you don't go back to where you came from. That's the mind of the Spirit. That is the way of God. And I want you to see what God is doing. I want your eyes to zoom out from just the small things that lack rent and fees and zoom out to the bigger picture of how God deals with humanity. And then he continues to say, you shall keep my judgments and do them. This is now not him commanding. This is him giving the certainty of things because of the law that he has appropriated in your spirit to obey God. Now some people don't see that this is the New Testament story. That's why when Peter speaks of how we are sanctified unto obedience, it's, it's more than just please obey God. No. There is something, there's a, there a law at work within us, the law of the life-giving spirit in Christ Jesus that sanctifies us unto obedience. There's something in us that is working in our lives. In fact, obedience for the new creation is not a work. It's not the 
the individual work. It is the underlying faith in the God that works in that individual, both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So he says we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God. We are, we are sanctified through the spirit by the sprinkling of the blood unto obedience. We are sanctified unto obedience. He has put a law in you that should cause you not to go back in what you have fallen into. Because his grace and peace daily is multiplied in you through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That law is within us. No person who understands the new birth would not appreciate or is not fully yielded to the spirit of grace that works in you. He says, walk out your salvation in fear and in trembling. He says, but it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. So there's something in us, there's a person in us willing to do right. There's somebody and something in us willing to do right. And that's the man which is begotten in God, the new creation, the spirit man in you. He says he's an enemy to the flesh and the flesh is an enemy to the spirit. So the mistake we have in the church is we look at the weaknesses of men in the flesh and take that for an imperfection of the same men in the spirit. No, no. The Bible says, though our outward man perish because of sin, but our inward man, the Bible says, is renewed daily by the Spirit of God. There's a difference between these two. Otherwise, how do you receive the strength to kill the man of the flesh if the man inside you is worse or of the same level with the man of the flesh? That's how we war. That's where our, our true war is. The Roman says that if you kill uh, the transactions of the body, you will surely leave. If you buy the spirit or if you through the spirit, the Bible says, kill the transactions of the body, you shall leave. So where does the ability of the man of the spirit uh, come from to kill the transactions of the body? It's because he's holy, he's sanctified, he's been created in true holiness and righteousness. Because to him, holiness is not a work. Holiness is is a nature of the new birth. That's what the Bible speaks of, you know, holiness, the general word, and true holiness. The Bible says you've put on the new man, which has been renewed. He's been birthed. He's been immersed in true holiness and righteousness. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the experience of the new birth. It's the experience of the new birth. So, we see God putting a new spirit in them, taking away the stony heart of flesh, giving them a new heart, putting a new spirit, causing them to walk in the statutes, for them to keep his judgments. And he says, and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I shall be your God. And 29 says, and I will also save you from all your uncleanliness, and I will call for the corn, and I will increase it, and I will lay no famine upon you, and I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. In other words, I intend to deal with you spiritually. And after dealing with you spiritually, dealing with your moral life, dealing with your, your faith life, dealing with your understanding and revelation life, if I deal with your spiritual, then I will get to the physical. I will get to the physical. God, when he comes to the New Testament, he doesn't intend to give you a car without dealing with your character. No. He wants to, yes, give you that car, but he also wants to deal with your character. It's important that you go to heaven. It's important that you live a righteous life in Christ Jesus. It's important that you are aligned to purpose and cause. It's important to God. It's important to God. Unfortunately, in our days, the testimony is the house and the car. Not the place where we can hear God. Not the place where we are givers toward God. Not the place where we are servants of God. Not the place where we are winning souls. It's, it's, it's the testimony is the car, the house. But that is changing in the mighty name of Jesus. So we see God deal with them. And in the 33rd verse, the Bible says, That saith the Lord God, In that day I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, 
And I will cause you to dwell, listen, in the cities and the west shall be builded. The west shall be builded. If you read that from the Amplified Version, he says, in that day, I will cleanse you from all your iniquities and I will also cause Israel's cities to be inhabited and the west places shall be rebuilt. He's saying, I will rebuild you. That's my mind. That's my name. That's my understanding. That's the greatness of my glory, the intention of my definitive plan. And he says in the next verse, and the desolate land shall be tilled that which had laid desolate in the sight of all who passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate, not you, they, people who are watching will say, this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden, and the west and desolate and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. If you go back in the verses earlier, you will see that that was the very land that used to swallow men, destroy them to swallowing them up. The same land God is saying, uh-uh, in the place where you were swallowed, in the place where you were consumed, in the place where you were destroyed. He says, I want to now rebuild those places, the very desolate, the places where they to pass by and say, uh uh, that ministry will never come back again. That marriage will never be built again. Her children will never be restored. That career is gone. She will never get money. That man will never get a wife. That woman will never get a husband again. That guy will never be rebuilt again. He's gone beyond repair. God is saying, they shall say to the very land that was desolate that it has become like the Garden of Eden and the western desolate and ruined cities shall be fortified and inhabited. And he says, and then the nations that are left around you and are about you shall know that I the Lord have rebuilt the ruined places and replanted that which was desolate. I the Lord have spoken it and I will do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I love it that they will say. I love it that all the nations around you God wants to rebuild you to a place where you won't need to speak about it to your enemies. No. He will make it so so abroad. He will expand the testimony of that thing. He will rise you to a place where they must see you. They must see you. And when they do, they will say, ah, oh, it's beautiful when you're not the one saying, oh, I have money. It's beautiful when they look at you and say, that woman has money. That man has been rebuilt. Her ministry has been restored. His marriage has been restored. His career is now upward and upward. God is saying, I will rebuild those desolate places. 37 says, that said the Lord God, for also will I let the house of Israel inquire of me to do it for them. I'll increase their men like a flock, like the flock of holy things for sacrifice, like the flock of, Jeru of Jerusalem in her solemn appointed feasts. So shall the west cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know and understand and realize that I'm the Lord God, the sovereign ruler, who calls forth loyalty and obedience in service. I will do it. I'll rebuild you. If this sermon is not important to you now, it one day will be. But when you remember this, remember that he will rebuild you. He can rebuild you. He is able to rebuild. He's the God who rebuilds. He rebuilds. He rebuilds. I want to pray with someone. Perhaps you're listening to me right now. And what you're going through seems like you are sinking you're sinking in debt could be your doing could be not your doing I don't know you're sinking in health could be your doing you smoke those cigarettes and now you're dealing with lung cancer could be not your doing you sat next to those that were smoking and you inhaled it. But you're a believer. You are a child of God. God wants to rebuild your body. God wants to rebuild your lungs. God wants to rebuild your heart. Somebody has a sick heart and you're watching me. There's a person you have kidney issues your kidneys both your kidneys are on zero 
There is a God who can rebuild those kidneys again and put life in those kidneys again. There's a marriage that has fallen. You were sent divorce papers. God can rebuild that marriage again. God can rebuild your child who is on drugs again. God can rebuild your business that has sunk in this COVID season. I want to pray with somebody who can dare to believe God for the impossible. Who can dare to believe God he is the God that rebuilds desolate places and desolate things. He can do it and he's going to do it for you. Again, he will rebuild you. Your inheritance is steadfast and it stands sure. It's still available for you in God. Somebody, you're going to receive your health back. Diabetes is healing. Hypertension is healing. There's somebody you've been dealing with wounds on the right, left side of your throat all through to the tongue the tongue but the pain goes down and it goes down it's mainly emphasized on the left side of your throat and it's going down and you have had a threat that it could be cancerous God tells me you're going to heal today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody you're dealing with mental issues. Bipolar. God is healing you tonight. Tonight, not tomorrow. You're tired of medication. God is going to heal you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. He can rebuild you again. He can rebuild whatever organ the devil has damaged. He can rebuild a new, you know, blood system. He can rebuild a new pancreas. He can rebuild a new kidney. He can rebuild it in the mighty name of Jesus. Raise your voice right now wherever you want to speak to God. I speak to your ministry if you're a minister. I know that your ministry could be broken right now because either of COVID or other, other reasons. But I declare and I declare that God rebuilds your ministry. God rebuilds your marriage, you man or woman. God rebuilds your finances. God rebuilds your business. God rebuilds your education. God rebuilds your eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus. God rebuilds your hearing. God rebuilds your service. There's somebody you've been struggling to hear God again. For a long time you fell off and you could not hear the voice of God for a long time. He's rebuilding that relationship with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And you're going to hear him more than ever before. I believe tonight that God is rebuilding all broken things. He's rebuilding all the desolate things. He's rebuilding all the, sh the shambles. He's rebuilding everything that was running out of line for you. I decree and I declare that this time mark this date on your calendar as God beginning a new chapter in your life and you shall not be disappointed in the mighty name of Jesus wonderful people of Busoga and Eastern region God is reviving our land like never before something is about to come to life something that had died for months is about to come to life something that had died in family lineages is about to come to life the mighty man of God, Apostle Grace Tubega of Fanero Ministries International, together with the local churches in Jinja, bring to us a mighty crusade in Jinja City with a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit, miracles, signs and wonders. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that separated the seas, that same power that uplifts the lowly, that same power that brings salvation, that same power of the Son of God. 18th, 19th, and 20th October 2024 at the Ginger Railway Grounds, 2 p.m. Bring the sick, lame, dumb, blind, and the deaf. Ginger, it's your time. Fanero, make manifest.